What's up guys, I'm Cheyenne, that's Tall Book Girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing some spooky romance recommendations. <laughs> Spooky. I feel like for spooky season, these are really great. We're going into October and we're all up in our feels for the dark romance. Like the bad guys, the villains, the anti-heroes, all the ones who don't deserve to find happiness and to have HEA. Um, these are basically those books. The men who are not stand-up guys. They're not stand-up guys. These are a little darker. Well, some of them are a lot darker and they just deserve a little recognition. So if you're like me, normally when I go into the fall and like, well, I wanna say spooky time, that's what I'm calling it. When I get into like the Halloween month and then going closer towards Christmas, I want all the dark romance. So I'm gonna give you some of my favorite recommendations and books that give me all of those spooky vibes and that way you can have a great kickstart to the month of October. So one of the first books I'm gonna recommend is Bite Marks by Jenica Snow. Um, I think this book is perfect for October and going into Halloween. In Bite Marks, we are following Adrian and Kayla. And Adrian is a vampire and Kayla is a human. Kayla kind of has this thing with dating, like she's just struggling. For some reason, she finds herself very like repulsed by men. Like she doesn't want to be touched. She doesn't, not that she's like into girls or anything. She just hasn't found someone who she's not like, ooh, get away from me. And, and that's until Adrian. Um, Kayla decides one night to go into this new club and just to have a night to like let loose and be carefree. And that's when Adrian sets sight on her for the first time. And Adrian has waited his entire life to find his mate. And he knows that his mate is Kayla the first second that he sees her. And this is their romance together. Um, there's some captive captor going on because Adrian basically kidnaps her and claims her as his. And there's a lot of fight in spite that happens from Kayla because she's like, who are you, you psychopath? I'm attracted to you. I don't want to be attracted to you. You practically kidnapped me and I'm pretty sure you're a vampire. He's about as alpha as alpha can get. There's a lot of dominance that he pulls over her, but Kayla has a lot of like spunk and a lot of bite in her. That was kind of cute. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like that, but it kind of makes sense. She does. She has some fight in her and some bite in her and some like ready to fight back. And I think that's the perfect blend that Adrian needed. And he was definitely looking for that kind of woman in his mate. So this is their romance together. If you love the vampire feel and, but it doesn't feel like super otherworldly and like fantasy like I think this would be great for you All right and the next book I'm going to recommend is Bad Saint by Monica James in this book we are following Saint and Willow and Willow is on her honeymoon we see her in the first scene and she's just recently married her husband and like her husband's like basically telling her I have to go do something will you just meet me downstairs they're in I think they're in Greece she goes downstairs to wait for her husband and she ends up being kidnapped by three men in ski masks so she doesn't see her husband. She's taken, she's woken up and she's on this yacht in the middle of nowhere, like in the ocean. And she has no idea what's going on. She's confused, like why would anybody want her? And that's when she meets Saint. And he's one of the men who captured her and he has taken her hostage and there's something that he wants from her. Well, there's a reason he's capturing her and that's to gain something that he has been missing and that he has been trying to fight back for. And you don't get all those answers until farther in the series, but if you love a good, like, just like, I don't even, it's just, there's so much that goes on in the series, but like, it gives me Sea of Ruin feels, except like she is not going willingly, um, stranded on an island, fighting like sex slavery, finding a lot of different things, but falling for someone who you shouldn't who is trying to be a good guy or trying to be a bad guy and doesn't know what he wants to do. And there's just so much reasoning to why they shouldn't be together that when they are together, oh, it's so good. This is one of my favorite trilogies of all time, especially for dark romance. Um, Satan and Willow are magic together. The entire journey that they go through as a couple is captivating and is one of my favorite favorite, favorite romances. All right, and the next book I'm gonna recommend for spooky season is The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. This is kind of a short baby, but it is the first book in a series. And in this book, this is basically a Peter Pan retelling. 
you have Wendy and Wendy has always known that the other women in her family, so like her mother for instance, they have always been taken on their 18th birthday. Some of them return and some of them don't and when they do they're normally broken and never the same. So her 18th birthday is coming up and she's fully expecting to be taken and kidnapped and to be like tormented, terrorized, whatever you want to call it. And um, it ends up being kind of the exact opposite for her. She's taken and automatically the men in Neverland are completely smitten by her, smitten by her. And this is a reverse harem retelling of Peter Pan. So there are so many different twists and turns, obviously, than the Disney movie. But this is a really great dark romance. It's short, it's a quick read, and a really fun time if you love a Peter Pan retelling. The next book I'm going to recommend is The Antichrist by Alma Jones. Um, this is going to be very difficult to explain because Alma Jones books are very wild and out there and I love them. But in The Antichrist, we are following Nico and Marikai and Nico is about as bad as bad can get, like covered in tattoos, rides a motorcycle, like does not follow the rule, does not follow the laws and has been given a job to do. Um, Marikai does not know anything about that. Her and Nico have just been friends her entire life and it's never been more than that except sometimes. But like Nico has made it very clear that he doesn't want her in that way. He does not have any type of romantic connection with her. He's not a guy who settles down. In fact, he actually has a girlfriend. And um, but him and Marikai have this really unexplainable connection with each other. Um, their relationship is twisted and toxic. Let me just say it that way. Um, Nico acts like he wants nothing to do with her but like puts full claim on her and nobody else can touch her, nobody else can have her until one day he screws her over and she gets put in a position that is life altering, that is miserable and it's very cultish to the point where there's no way out. And Marikai is left in a position of, I hate him, but I love him still. And if I ever see him again, I'm gonna make it clear how much I can't stand him. And that's all I'm gonna say because like, like Amo Jones books, there's so many things to it that I just couldn't even have the time to touch on. You just have to read it for yourself to find out. But dark, dark, dark romance, even when you go into the beginning of the book, all of her trigger warnings are listed. They're all listed on the bottom so you know ahead of time what to expect before going into it. Make sure you check that out. And um, I don't know, just another great book from Mama Jones. And the next book I'm gonna recommend is Beautifully Broken by Michelle Hurd. This is the first book in Michelle Hurd's Beautifully Broken series. And in this one, we're following Kara and Damien. Um, Kara has, she's overseas, and I think she's living there at the time. And she ends up witnessing her parents get murdered. And she is immediately like, What's happening? Who's out to get my family? Like I thought we were happy and everything was fine and obviously it's not. Well, her uncle tells her, you need to leave, go back to the States, like be gone, do not stay in any place longer than like 45 days or something like that. And just make yourself scarce, change your identity and just start over. Well, seven years later, finally, like Kara is in a place where she can start to feel like she can settle down a little bit. And um, she ends up being kidnapped by men in the mafia. She's kidnapped, she's put into this box, wakes up, she has no idea where she's at, she's tormented, she's traumatized. She is like everything that you can possibly think of that would be terrible for a woman to go through until she's rescued by a man named Damien and he is our hero. And this is their romance together. Um, Kara has some trauma that she has to work through, like rightfully so. And Damien is very cold hearted. And like, this is his job is to rescue kidnapped women who especially have been like terrorized. This is just what he does. So it's another day in the office for him essentially. But um, Kara is different. And Kara has like made him soften in a way that he doesn't normally with clients, as you could call it. Um, and he ends up caretaking for her and he ends up being a friend to her. And this is a very, very, very slow burn romance, but it is dark with triggers of so much hurt and pain and um, just an emotional roller coaster that this couple goes through in order to overcome the trauma and overcome, you know, things that need to be dealt with in order to have a stable and healthy relationship, even a friendship. So it's very much a book of growth, but also really dark romance. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Be prepared for emotional triggers. Like I said, um, there's a lot of them and it can leave you wrecked and feeling like you're broken on the inside too, but you are definitely hurting for Kara and understanding her pain. All right, and the next book I'm gonna recommend for spooky season is The Elite Kings Club by Alma Jones. 
Um, it's not really a shocker that I'm recommending another Alma Jones book. And this is actually a series too. So you're going to want to start with the first book. And oh gosh, The Elite King's Club is a wild, wild ride. A wild ride. Bishop and Madison are our hero and our heroine. And Bishop is a part of a group called the Kings. And the Kings essentially rule the entire town. They rule the town. They're a part of this like brotherhood. And uh, Madison gets thrown into this prep school in high school and she is immediately like tossed into their world. That's messy, that's wild, that nobody knows what's going on because there's so many secrets. This is a world of money, of power, of overcoming trauma, of violence of like people dying and never knowing why they are dying. The series is is just a roller coaster ride. So be prepared for that. As alpha as alpha can get on the heroes, like every single male in their friend group is alpha. Bishop and Madison have like an unexplainable connection that is healthy and unhealthy and all of the things in between. And um, this world that Amo creates in the Elite Kings Club is very captivating. And in some ways it kind of reminds me of Paper Princess, but darker. It also reminds me a little bit of Hannaford Prep by Jay Bree, if you've read that series before. Even though it is set place in high school, it doesn't feel immature to me. You really do forget that you're in a world of like 18 and under. And the series follows them as they age too. So it does get better and better. And it's just a dark and twisted, mess of like entanglement and brotherhood and secrets and all the things in between. I always say that with almost books because they're very difficult to explain. If you love a series filled with fast paced drama and violence and a strong, strong romance, um, definitely pick up the Elite Kings Club. It's such a good one and one of my favorites. All right, and I'm also gonna recommend Even If It Hurts by Sam Mariano. Um, this book is a wild ride, a wild ride. Sam Mariano's books normally are. In this book, we're following Dare and Aubrey. And um, Aubrey in the beginning, you see her like kind of tick off this other girl that goes to her school over like clothes. Like she's not able to return clothes or something like that. She's not able to, able to return something because she doesn't have a receipt or it's very something, something very catty and stupid and that you wouldn't normally get mad at someone about. But um, this girl is like the queen bee in the school and she is dating Dare and Dare is our hero. Well, Aubrey does not give two craps and she's trying to figure out why this girl has it against her and then she eventually does. Well, the girl and Dare, they end up plotting this plan to terrorize and like torment Aubrey because she is so mad. She doesn't tell Dare in the beginning why, but she's just like, I can't stand her. Like, I want to make her pay. And she's like, I want you because they have this open relationship. I want you to like basically make her fall for you and then break her heart, sleep with her, do whatever you have to do. And then we're going to turn around and we're going to hurt her to where she's heartbroken and lonely and feels worthless. So this entire book is Dare's mission to accomplish that with Aubrey. And, um, this is one of those books that is not as dark as San Mariano's normally are, but it's more of like, it screws with your head. It screws with your head and you think you know what's happening, but then you don't. But psychologically, it's going to like twist you up and tear you apart. And like you, you just, you got to trust me on that, but you have to go into it with an open mind. And I think basically reading this blind is the best bet. Um, Dare is definitely one of a kind and he has a way of thinking and a way of like acting out his intentions that is not normal, is not normal. And Aubrey finds herself like wanting love and wanting to be loved, but she also doesn't trust easily. And um, the mix of the two of them is electric, but scary and dangerous. All right, guys, so that's all I have for my spooky romance recommendations. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you take these and apply them to October for you. I feel like they'd be a really good segue into spooky season in October. And it's just, these are really fun reads that I love for dark romance. And I just hope that you enjoy them as well. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you are not already subscribed, please feel free to do that. Don't forget to like and leave a comment. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.